Plastic surgery interventions can cost anything from hundreds of pounds to tens of thousands of pounds, and some procedures cost upwards of 50 or 60 thousand pounds, depending on where in the world you go. I want to go through the five best value procedures in all of plastic surgery in terms of value for money and the amount of benefit they offer for the amount of investment made by the patient. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you've been to the channel before, welcome back. As I promised a few days ago, although it's turned into weeks now, I was going to discuss some of the best value procedures in plastic surgery and cosmetic surgery treatment. The value of each procedure is obviously relative to how much it costs and how much physical, emotional cost, complication rate is involved. And if you want to learn a little bit more about my thoughts on this, then if you go back and look at the video, the worst value plastic surgery treatments, then you'll be able to see exactly what I mean. But for the benefit of this video, we're going to keep it quite short. So let's get into it just now. Just in case you haven't, it's really helpful for me as a YouTube creator. If you like, subscribe and comment on any and all of the videos, a like goes a long way to encourage YouTube to share my videos with more YouTube viewers and any comments are gratefully received and I always answer them. Counting down number five on the best value plastic surgery treatments is the breast augmentation operation. Some people might say that this should be higher and I understand why they might say this. The amount of improvement in people's self-esteem, their body confidence, their self-worth uh, can be immeasurable. People often come to clinic with a whole new wardrobe looking and feeling much more confident, much more outgoing. And because of this, you might say that this should be closer to the top of the list. The key consideration for me, however, is that breast augmentation surgery, usually with an implant based technique, is not one operation for life. Most of these operations are performed in young women, although of course there are older women and reconstructive applications. But when you place a silicone breast implant into a young breast, there is a whole life ahead of it. That life often includes babies, breastfeeding, changes in weight, both up and down, and changes in breast shape with aging. The problem with all of these factors is that the breast envelope and the breast implant don't always fit. And what we commonly see is in patients 40s or 50s, if they've had an augment in their 20s or 30s, the breast and the implant are no longer friends. Something needs to be done to improve their relationship. This can either be an exchange of an implant for a larger one, or alternatively, a smaller one with a tightening of the skin capsule. We call this a mastopexy. Some patients prefer to have the implants taken out, but unfortunately, the detractor from breast augmentation surgery, in my opinion, is the fact that it is not one operation for life. It's typically one operation for 15 or 20 years, followed by at least one more, and sometimes even two or three more, to allow the breast and the implant to age gracefully together. Number four, and this is one very close to my heart because I'm a facelift specialist surgeon, is the facelift. A facelift is a fantastic and probably the most reliable way to rejuvenate the entire face, including the cheeks, the jowls, the corners of the mouth, the jawline and the neck. There are many treatments which offer to do this for a much cheaper price, but they are invariably disappointing. Now a facelift can cost from seven or eight thousand pounds in the cheaper parts of Europe, all the way up to 50, 60, even a hundred thousand pounds in some parts of America. And so value is very much subjective. But in my opinion, a facelift is by far the most effective way to turn a 55 year old tired looking face into a vibrant, bright, fresh, youthful face. Again, very much like breast augmentation, we see patients coming into clinic with a spring in their step, a new haircut, a new look, new clothing, and it is genuinely transformative. Of course, in the minus column when it comes to facelift surgery, then it is expensive. There is a lot of surgery involved and there is some significant recovery involved and it's not entirely without its own list of complications and problems. And so this is why it isn't up higher up the list. But I think a facelift is one of the very best value for money operations in plastic surgery. Number three on my list is the upper blepharoplasty operation. Now, blepharoplasty is the surgical Removal of extra folds of skin, which hang down in front of the eyelids. These folds of skin invariably make a patient look tired, 
because they make the eyelids sit lower in front of the eyes and make us look like we are sleepy. It's a very simple operation done under local anaesthetic and can cost anywhere from 1,000 to three or 4,000 pounds. I'm sure you can spend more, but for 2,000 or 3,000 pounds in the UK, it is a truly transformative operation. The other real bonus about blepharoplasty surgery is nobody knows you've had it done. It's not the kind of operation that shouts about itself, it doesn't stand out in a crowd. People just think you look brighter and fresher, and that's almost the universal response to an upper blepharoplasty operation. An upper blepharoplasty has the advantage of being a long-lasting operation. Not many people need it doing twice, but never say never. If you have heavy eyelids in your 40s, then there is a chance you may choose to have this operation again in your 60s. If you're interested in eyelid aging, I have a video on that exact subject. But for a lot of people, their eyelid aging happens in their fourth or fifth decade, and once is often enough for this particular operation. Also, the recovery is relatively short from seven to 10 days, although there's always a little bit of swelling that persists for a few weeks. The operation is pretty reliable, giving good quality results in the majority of surgeons' hands with a high satisfaction rate amongst patients. I very, very rarely find patients having an upper blepharoplasty who don't sing its praises afterwards and recommend it to many of their friends. I think operation two on the list of five is an abdominoplasty. A bit like a facelift, an abdominoplasty is not without significant cost and recovery. But unfortunately, when you are in your post-pregnancy body, maybe 35, 40, 45 years old, when you finished having children and your stomach and the muscles that underlie the skin are no longer neat and tidy, then no amount of exercise, no amount of diet, weight loss, physical exertion will bring your abdomen back into shape. For this reason and this reason alone, an abdominoplasty is the only real solution to this problem other than control underwear, these kind of clothing options. It's also a very, very effective way to tighten the muscles, restore the normal anatomy and remove the excess folds of skin. It can also remove stretch marks if they sit below the umbilicus or belly button. It's an excellent way to return what was a flabby, shapeless abdomen into a very neat and tidy one. And once again, patients have a very high level of satisfaction. One of the reasons this is not number one, in my opinion, is that there is a significant amount of surgery with three to six weeks of recovery, which can be quite a impact on people's lives. It also has a modest degree of complications associated and not all abdominoplasties have a perfect result with minimal downtime. One of the other advantages of abdominoplasty surgery is as long as you have had your entire family and you don't gain a huge amount of weight or indeed lose a huge amount of weight, then it tends to be for life, which some of the other operations on this list, including facelift and breast augmentation surgery are not. As with many other operations on this list, the patients are extremely happy in the vast majority of cases with abdominoplasty, despite the high cost and the significant surgical intervention. And finally, number one, the one you've been waiting for, in my opinion, the best value procedure in all of cosmetic surgery is Botox. The reason why I say this is because over 35, 40 years since Botox was first suggested as a therapeutic treatment, it has been applied many hundreds of millions of times. It has an extremely low complication risk, so low that in the UK it is injected by almost anyone although it still needs prescribing by a doctor. The effects are extremely reliable, but at the same time, they also wear off reliably after four to six months. And so if your application or if your Botox experience is not exactly what you wanted it to be, then there's every chance that you will completely recover within a few months time and not have to go to that practitioner or have that treatment again. It's not cheap, but in the UK, it costs between 150 and 500 pounds to have a facial treatment with Botox. And for 500 pounds, I think it is, in the appropriate patient, the most effective, reliable, satisfying way for both patient and doctor to achieve a fresher look to the face. It doesn't work on its own. It, it needs help if the other tissues are sagging or the skin quality is poor and you need to be judi judicious when you apply Botox. But the number of Botox applications performed every year in the UK and across the world very strongly suggests that it is a truly excellent procedure and all of my facelift patients irrespective of age have the word Botox mentioned to them because I think it can act as an effective adjunct and a 
positive addition to almost all cosmetic surgery procedures to the face. Other than needing repeating every five or six months, the other downside to Botox, which I make no apologies for, is that it is somewhat of a gateway treatment to cosmetic surgery when people realize how effective it is and how much fresher they can look with Botox alone. Then they tend to come back and discuss other aging factors with us. This is how we make our living. And so that's another reason why I think Botox is an excellent procedure. If you are interested in any of my other videos, then please click here. You'll see my video on the worst value plastic surgery procedures to go in tandem with this one. If you have any questions about plastic surgery in general or about these videos or any comments or any likes, then by all means submit them. If you have any questions about plastic surgery and you're in the UK, by all means contact Charlotte, my secretary, on the contact details at the end of the video. I really look forward to seeing you on the next video.